Hi, welcome back to ODE YouTube channel and to another collection overview video. Today the theme is pens that have grid patterns. It's just some other like sub collection. Maybe there's someone out there interested in that and if they google it pens with grid patterns, maybe they'll find this video and they find it useful. I don't have an, a, a specific collection on those kind of pens, I don't have many, and but I'll show mine. This video will not be as long as these videos usually are, because I only have eight pens of this kind. And so let's start. The first pen is a Chinese Bauer pen. It is obviously inspired on the Montblanc Star Walker that has the logo there floating inside this transparent dome. This one has not that logo, it doesn't say it is Montblanc. It's not like a, a fake, but it is obviously highly inspired. It posts by by screwing the cap on the on the bottom of the barrel and it says there Bauer. This is one of the pens that I asked my brother to bring me from Asia when he was in India. So this one, this was one of the pens he brought me. So I never used it yet. I have it for review or something like that and I didn't have the chance to do it so far. So this May, may come someday. The pen is, as far as I believe, made... I'm not 100% sure. In, in the bad quality of these engravings, it looks almost like shiny aluminium, the, the material of the pen, but I'm not sure. It is a little bit heavy for aluminium, but I think it is. This is the only modern pen that you can still find uh, as new. This is the only modern pen that I have to show you today. The other seven pens are older. I will not say vintage, but older. I think most of them will come from the 1960s or 1970s. The next pen is a pen that I showed you before on the video on Japanese pens. And this is a crest pen. You have the name of the brand there on the cap ring and there is no other information of where the pen was made, but I know that crest was a Japanese brand. The pen has a section with a hooded nib like a Parker 51 and an aerometric filling. This pen is also made of aluminium and this is very light. This is kind of a special pen because my grandfather gave it to me uh, one day when I think when I was in college and I wrote a lot with it. However, once wh while I was writing in one of my many notebooks, the tip broke. I think you can see there. And I never tried to replace. I'm a little bit afraid because the, the Parker 51 can be disassembled and it works. I'm not sure I can disassemble this pen very easily and replace the nib. I think I have Parker 51 nibs around or even maybe a Chinese nib from a, a Hero pen. But first I will need to have the courage to try to open the pen and maybe ruining it and I don't want to ruin the pen. The next pen that I will show you is also from Japan. So China, Japan, Japan. And you will see that Japan is winning on this list. This was also shown on, the, on that video, on that collection overview of Japanese pens, and this one says Japan clearly. One thing that is 
a little bit annoying. I'm not that OCD, but for some people I think it will be even more annoying than to me, is that the 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 chasing on the pen is not perfect because you can see it going upward there and also the same here the, the lines are not parallel with the ends of the pen which is strange but this pen is also a crest pen same material same kind of very lightweight but this pen has this ending here uh, arrow shaped clip although it's not a Parker clip but I think this pen reminds me of a Parker 75 pen. We have the same aerometric filling system and this is another interesting pen. I wrote with this a couple of times but it's not very spectacular as a writing experience and it's just here. This one I got from the flea market here in Lisbon, that flea market that sometimes has interesting stuff and I think many people from abroad now think that the flea market in Lisbon is a wonderful place to find pens. No, it is not. But if you go there many, many times, sometimes you'll find good stuff, but only sometimes. Usually things are too expensive and they just they are just miserable i i once found a parker 51 with a broken barrel uh, with a, a distorted uh, shell and the nib was bent and the cap was full of dings and the seller was telling me buy it because it is a parker pen and how much is it 80 euros so completely crazy. The pen was destroyed. There was nothing that I could really use of the pen because there wasn't a part that I would say this is good so I'll use this in some other restoration uh, project and they asked me 80 euros for that pen. So don't think Lisbon is a good place for buying pens at the flea market. Sometimes good pens appear. Now, we'll keep ourselves in Asia. China, Japan, Japan, India. This pen, yes, it looks like a Parker 45, but it is not. It is one of those replicas of Parker 45. I like Parker 45 so much that I even collect the replicas. And it has the same kind of clip as a Parker 45, but it is a medical pen. I wonder why this pen is called medical. Medical is how in Portuguese we call to a doctor. So, does medical in uh, some place in India means doctor also. Maybe it is a Portuguese word that got there and stayed in India. I'm not sure. Maybe someone will be able to answer that. So you'll have a section very similar to the Parker 51 section, the same kind of nib, very similar pen. But this doesn't smell that good and it has a fixed uh, system and it says medical here as I showed you and this is quite loose but the pen is nice I bought it because I found it interesting I bought this on eBay and I think it is a good addition to a collection of copies of Parker 45 and I think that this finish is quite beautiful with this light blue with the lines engraved. I, I kind of like this pen. You can, you can watch the review of this pen. This is the only one uh, of these that I have a review online so far. Now, the next pen is, needs a, a little journey to the other side. We were in Asia and now we go to the United States and this is um, 
a Parker 75, the one that inspired this. Actually, this is the pen which design inspired the grid designs on pens. It was a creation, as far as I know, by Parker, inspired on a cigarette or a lighter that had this kind of, of pattern. I think it was a cigarette case that had this pattern from the, the manager of the Parker company and they decided to make a pen with this kind of finish. So this is a sterling silver pen with a gold nib that says there Parker and it is, it is an interesting pen. The Parker 75 is quite interesting, it has an empty cartridge now and it is an interesting pen for some reasons you can see here there is some kind of a scale and the the barrel has the the section has some facets to guide your fingers and because not every people every person writes with the same angle it forced you to hold the pen in some position but because you may want to rotate it a little bit you can rotate the nib you can hold it here and Holding the pen firmly, you can just do this and rotate the pen all around. You see? Which, which is fun. Until you have the right angle that works for you. They even have a little tool to make this rotation happen without uh, getting your fingers inked. So it was an interesting uh, feature. And this was a pen that sold very well and it was a success in Parker. So this is a sterling silver a version of the Parker 75. There are lots of variations, lots of models of this pen. Uh, I didn't... Uh, I, I don't use it that much, but it is definitely an interesting pen. And now I have here another interesting pen that has the same kind it is the same pen, it comes also from the United States and it has a slightly different finish. Okay, it tarnished a little bit, I know that. You can see the nib here, the same kind of section. It is a little bit tarnished, but the pen is a little bit different and if you look at them, you can see they are different in color and this one is the sterling silver pen and this one is the sterling I'm not sure if you can see it sterling vermeil which means it has a like a gold wash over the silver and it makes it have a warmer tone of silver and I think this is also an interesting pen. And now let's go to the final two and we will go all the way to Asia again and we go to Japan once more. And the last two pens are from Japan. One of those pens is this fantastic Parker, uh, sorry, Pilot Elite. And the Pilot Elite is a beautiful pen. I've showed you this pen several times before. It has also the same kind of pattern as the Parker 75. Almost the same size of the squares. It says Pilot here on the clip, Elite there. And on the cap band in the other side it says Sterling Silver. It is a beautiful pen. It has some dings. And most of all, it has a wonderful, majestic nib. And it is an interesting manifold nib, which is not, I, I would say it's not that common. At least for me it wasn't. And this pen writes wonderfully. It is the pen that had the kind of filling system with the push button and the accordion sac. The sac has gone bad. I wanted to do something and I found out this uh, kind of a homemade very big cartridge that now works on the pen and the pen takes so much ink here inside the section that you can see the ink level is there but if we flip it around the 
part of the cartridge is almost full, so there's a lot of ink inside there. The pen writes very well, very wet, beautiful, beautiful, large nib. You can see the video where I talked about how I would solve the problem with the filling system. And finally, we have another Pilot and another Pilot Elite. There, the same kind of lettering. And this one has not silver because this one is made of steel, but it has this engraved pattern with black on it. But unlike all the others, these has not. This are not squares. This this pen is made of I would say very uh, long rectangles, and it is an interesting pocket pen by Pilot. It has this kind of nib that I really like, and it posts very long section, very short barrel. It posts and it becomes very long, very comfortable to write with. The nib is beautiful and it is a. This is a 14 karat gold fine nib. I love these nibs. This nib is the same kind, although this is white in color, this is um, the same nib that you'll find on the current Pilot Elite pens. So, beautiful large nib, but let me just show off. If you think this is a big nib, or a large nib, look at the size of this older Pilot Elite. The nib is much bigger. I think this nib on this one is wonderful. And when you look at it, you don't think the nib is as big as it is, just when you compare it with other pens. So, this is all I had to show you. This is my collection of pens that have grid pattern. I'm not sure if I will get more. I think someday I want to have this pen with the same sterling silver version as this. So I think this is maybe the only other grid pattern pen that I want to have. Unless, of course, Caveco reminds themselves to make a pen like that. But I'm not really collecting these kind of pens. I have these pens for several reasons. I have this one because I like the, the Pilot uh, Elite pocket pen kind of pen. I, I had this because it had this nib and I thought it was the same size but a longer barrel. So I bought this one because of that. I bought the 75 because it is an iconic model. This I bought just because it was maybe one or two euros and I want just to just to have another pen to to have material to, to reviews, to make reviews. This one I got uh, from my grandfather and this one I got from the flea market because it was the same uh, brand as the pen that was from my grandfather and this one I got from eBay because it is roughly a Parker 45 and I collect Parker 45s and uh, copies. So all of them have uh, an explanation for being in my collection, that is not having the, the grid pattern. I think it's interesting, but I'm not, I, I'm not in love with the pattern, but I kind of collect some of the characteristics of these pens. They just happen to have the same kind of finish. So, I hope this was useful, at least entertaining, and I hope to see you soon in the next video. Bye!